channel. Today we're just going to be sitting, eating and having a chat. A very chilled video. Right from the get-go, this is not eat with me. So if you want to go get something to eat, snack, meal, whatever, something you fancy, then go get it because we're going to be eating together. I have an incredibly heavy bowl of pasta. I don't know if anyone noticed. It's tuna. It, I'm, we need to discuss the vegetarianism. <laughs> Anyway, first things first, before I properly get into this, I have obviously been doing a campaign for Beat, the UK's eating disorder charity. I'm selling some t-shirts and hoodies. When you're seeing this, on the day that you're seeing this, they, they actually stop being sold at midnight that night. So if you want one, run and get one. I will leave the link in the description right now um, and I'll show you them. They come in three colours, but I only have two here to show you because I've worn the other one so much. Um, so this is the red. It's just this really cute design and it says, give yourself the love that you deserve. And this is it in blue, also super cute. And it also comes in green, which I'll put here. And there's also hoodie versions of all of those available. So yeah, on with the video because I actually have, I asked on Instagram for questions and I've screenshotted quite a few. Looking at this bowl of pasta, I'm not sure how long it's gonna take me. And basically I'm gonna try and edit this as little as possible so it's, more of you know less like cuts and jumps around but i do say so many filler words that i do feel like maybe it might be a bit painful if i don't edit some of them out um but we're just gonna eat and answer your questions i think i forgot to say oh i think i forgot to say that i have a bowl of tuna and sweet corn pasta but you probably gathered that and i will get into that in a little bit okay let's just start from the top because this kind of does actually apply to what i'm eating right now so this person said, is it okay to want the same foods for a while? Example, bagels for lunch all the time. Now, obviously there's two angles to this. It depends what the food is. If it's a safe food and you're like, oh, I just really fancy it all the time, but you're only eating it because it's a safe food. You need to have that conversation with yourself and realize that, um, why am I really eating this? But I'm not gonna lie to you. This is probably the fifth or sixth time, between four and six times this week I've had pasta, basically. And I chose it again for lunch today because I'm just going through a phase at the moment where I'm obsessed with pasta. And that's not, it's not um, a safe food for me, obviously I don't have safe foods anymore because I just eat anything. So I think if you're genuinely just really fancying it and it's what you want, you should honor that, you should have it. It doesn't matter if you've had it loads of times already, but I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that if you're just sticking to your safe foods every day that that's fine because you obviously need to challenge other things. So I said, how was primary school for you? I think I kind of went to, I went to two different schools, infant and junior. Um, so I didn't have like a whole primary school experience, but for me, primary school, early, like early primary school was fine. Upper primary school wasn't shit hit the fan. So the two girls that I was closest with in infant school left as we went into junior school. Um, and so I kind of didn't have any friends and then I spent the rest of uh, junior school basically trying to find a friendship group and girls just are not nice um, at that age or sometimes at any age until you mature. So I had quite a rough time of it, but all in all, it wasn't the worst thing in the world, but the friendship issues definitely played a part in my mental health as I got older. How's jewelry making going? I actually haven't made jewellery in ages. I've got like 10 or 15 or something necklaces that I made in the summer that I just haven't got around to selling. Do let me know if you'd want me to sell those. Because I feel like I've I've not talked about it in so long that nobody's going to want them anymore. But I do want to shift them. So if you want them, comment and I'll sell them. <laughs> mm -mm, mm -mm. Do you go to uni? I get this question every Q&A that I do. I'm not at uni. I also got a lot of people say... Um, do you want to go to uni soon and are you going to go back to school? So I'm 20 years old, I can't go back to school, uh, I also can't go back to college and I don't have A-levels, so I can't actually go to uni. I could do an access course, of course there's so many options to get into like uni and stuff nowadays, but um, that's not my plan at the moment. I'm just kind of going with it, seeing where life takes me and focusing on myself rather than making plans for education, because I knew that I had to drop out of college because I just couldn't do it, basically. So I'm not putting that pressure on myself at the moment. Did you ever relapse in recovery? So I kind of hate the expression 
relapse is a part of recovery because uh sure you can have slip backs that's completely natural it's not going to be a straight that's straight <laughs> it's not going to be a straight linear line but telling everyone that like relapse will happen in recovery is just not helpful i didn't i didn't answer it like to answer your question i didn't relapse um i am still in ongoing recovery but i do believe i'm in a place where i wouldn't relapse obviously if i spotted early warning signs and completely ignored them then i would have a chance of doing that but i'm so self-aware now and i know that i don't want to go backwards so i don't believe i will relapse and throughout my recovery yeah i had really hard days i had really hard weeks did i go backwards or stop at any point no so no i didn't relapse in recovery this pasta is actually really good is recovery really worth it yes a hundred million billion trillion times yes I can't tell you how worth it is. I am just, I'm so different. My whole life is so different. Like there's really nothing to describe just how incredible it is to get to a place where your life starts opening up and everything's so much better. I'm eating this so messily. If there's one thing I know, it's that I will never regret recovery and I never have regretted recovery. So, What is your dog's full name? Beatrice Yappington the first. <laughs> it was my brother that asked that question, but it's just so funny. She's she's a royalty. She's royalty in this house, honestly. How did your parents become educated to encourage you nicely in recovery? I think this is really hard. If there's any parents watching this, please don't beat yourself up for it being a really difficult thing to navigate. Mm, for my parents, I mean, I'm quite lucky in the sense that my parents haven't ever, I don't really know how to word this. Cause obviously they get, they've been angry. Like naturally every human feels angry and gets angry, but they've never been aggressive. Like I had some questions from people like, how do I cope with my parents being aggressive? And I said, well, my parents haven't really been aggressive to me. So I don't really know how to help with that. But for them to encourage me nicely, I do think that there are stages that a parent goes through when your child has an eating disorder and it's really difficult. I think the first kind of phase was like, what the hell, how, how has this happened? How have I not realized? And it's completely not their fault, but they do, I feel like parents blame themselves because they didn't spot it or they didn't notice. And I think there probably was some kind of anger because parents just, well, from what I've known of people that have been in hospital and stuff, parents don't know how to deal with it. They don't know how to deal with their child kind of getting angry at them when they try and get them to eat because eating is like the most natural human part of life. This is a very long winded way of getting to your question, but it did just take them time. I think they just had to realize that actually pushing me and pushing me and pushing me was never gonna make me recover. I had to do it for myself and I came to that conclusion myself. And when I did, I was a lot more successful than any of the times that people have been pushing me or my parents have been like, do it, do it, do it. I'm not saying give up on your children, do not, but just know that Sometimes there isn't much you can actually do other than be there for them and be gentle with them and definitely encouraging them not nicely. It's never gonna really work. Favorite memory post recovery. So I probably have to say one of them. I've had quite a lot, but one of them was me and my boyfriend got the train to London and we went and saw Phoebe Bridges. I swear I managed to mention Phoebe Bridges in every single Q&A that I do, but I'd been obsessed with her for a very long time and I really pushed myself because I struggle with public transport and I went and like that's just such an important memory to me so probably that one also 21st birthday plans I don't actually have any as of right now but it's in like two months which is crazy how am I 21 in like two months I still feel 15 I swear I was gonna go to Amsterdam a bit rogue I know but I went to Amsterdam when I was 14, I think, and I like fell in love with it. I absolutely loved it and I've been dying to go back. So I was going to go there for my 21st, but then I just decided that I probably shouldn't book something that I couldn't be 100% sure I'd be up for because January is quite soon. Like it feels like ages away, but it is quite soon. Um, so I think me and my boyfriend might end up doing like a countryside break or something like that because I thought that would be quite nice. I just... I want to do something special because it's my 21st but I don't really drink that much and 
I really can't do nightclubs because <laughs> I'm very anxious and easily overstimulated. So something gentle and calm, probably. What things does Brandon do when you're struggling that really help you? So for reference, if you're new here, Brandon is my boyfriend and mm, it depends what way I'm struggling because obviously when I'm struggling in the sense of like PTSD and stuff, that's very personal and I couldn't apply what I do to anyone else because A, I would end up having to open up about trauma online, which I'm never going to do. Um, oh no, it's really raining. I don't know if you can hear that. I keep losing my train of thought. When I'm struggling anorexia wise, he does actually just say to me, what would you tell one of your followers if you if they were feeling this way right now? And actually talking to myself how I would speak to someone else if I was trying to help them helps me because I know it's true. But sometimes you do just get this little whiny little anorexia voice kind of overtaking what, what your logic's telling you and what you actually know. And so I kind of just had to, had to? I kind of have to fight back against that, if you know what I mean. Um, so he'll remind me to talk to myself like I was talking to someone I was trying to help. Um, mm, he will stay with me and encourage me if I am like struggling, but it doesn't happen very often. If I'm randomly like finding stuff really hard, he will cook um, and I won't be in the kitchen. He'll just be like, don't watch. Because I do have some times where if I watch him cook, I will freak out. I don't know why, I just panic, but yeah. Any lingering ED behaviors you still struggle with or find difficult? Um, okay, so this is interesting. Because obviously, I've always said that with my vegetarianism, I was doing it for like purely ethical reasons and environmental reasons. And guys, I would never lie. I will never lie on this channel. I just don't lie. But I started thinking recently about how actually when I, it was actually when I was going out to restaurants and I was kind of seeing things on the menu and I was thinking, mm, as a vegetarian, there's just not much I can get and it does feel a bit limiting. And I sort of thought back to what my favourite things to eat were as a child and at the moment I have only eaten fish by the way. Like I haven't branched out but I probably will. And I kind of realised that actually vegetarianism wasn't normal for me as a child. And obviously it's very normal to go from eating meat as a child to being vegetarian as an adult. But here was my thinking. I did go vegetarian in the middle of my eating disorder. I wasn't well when I chose to go vegetarian and it provided an excuse in terms of it made me feel like oh... I can cook my own meals now because my family won't eat vegetarian and I won't have to eat with them. And as much as I do care about the environment and I really, really care about animals and that is definitely a big part of it in my mind, I felt I needed to test actually how much of it was still disordered because, you know, I'm very switched on about my own mental health. That is something that like every professional that's ever worked with me tells me is that like I no, I feel like my hands are just like in your face the whole time. It's like I know what's going on for me. But I did just all of a sudden start getting this inkling that like, well, maybe vegetarianism is a bit restrictive and holding me back a bit. And I was like, well, it's not going to hurt to try it out, if you know what I mean. So I ate tuna pasta actually last weekend. And the only, um, the only thoughts in my head while I was eating it were kind of panicked and they felt a little bit like when I was breaking rules with my eating disorder because obviously I did all of that or I thought I'd done all of it but when I was eating it I, my brain was going oh my god oh my god what are you doing what are you doing and it felt you know that really out of control feeling like say you're in a nightmare and you're walking around school in this nightmare and you're naked you know that feeling where you're like panicked and you're like oh my god I'm so out of control and you just feel really like detached from what you're doing because it's in a nightmare but that's kind of how I felt when I was A, facing my old fear foods, foods, <laughs> facing my old fear foods, but B, when I was eating the tuna for the first time last weekend. And then I was like, that's really interesting. I think maybe there's a little bit of eating disorder stuck with my vegetarianism, which I've always denied because, as I said, do have very strong feelings about the environment and ethics and morals and stuff, but I didn't want to be held back. So basically, that's what that is. Do you have any Christmas traditions? Yes. So, I mean, this one kind of stopped when I got ill because I was in um, hospital over Christmas time sometimes. But um, when I was a kid, 
which this is something that I will do when I have children. We used to go to John Lewis every Christmas time uh, and we'd have dinner in town and then we go to John Lewis and we pick out like, you know, they have those unique baubles, like random ones, like a, I think we have like a seal or like a wooden squirrel and just like random quirky ones. And so now our tree is covered in all these random quirky ones that we had when we were a kid. My boyfriend's calling me. Hello. Anyway, wait, where was I? What was I talking about? Oh yeah. So basically now our Christmas tree is just covered in like cute decorations from when we were kids, but they're not like tacky or gross. Like they are like really cute, but they're all just mismatching. So I just think that's really sweet because it's a lot of memories from when I was younger, which is really nice. This one's, oh my God, I nearly choked. This one's a bit intense. This person said, did you ever partake in any pro-Anna content when you were ill? If you don't know what pro-Anna is, don't look it up, but effectively it's people that promote anorexia uh, and like glorify it, but like actually like worship it. To me, it's weird as fuck. You will never find me promoting it or thinking that it's good or trying to get other people to be anorexic. Like that is just, no. It's a big no in my mind. Like I can't even fathom why people would want to do that uh so no even when i was ill i wasn't about making myself more ill and i wasn't well mm, in the terms of i wasn't trying to trigger myself with other people online i'd never looked up like pictures of ill people to make myself feel worse and i certainly would never share anything to try and make anyone else worse because what i was going through was living hell i didn't want anyone else to be dealing with that so absolutely not uh, i really don't understand it if i'm honest do you regret your ED? Or although it was awful, are you glad it's made you who you are? I don't regret it. The reason I don't regret it is because it wasn't my fault. So I don't have anything to regret because I had no control over it. I got ill. I couldn't help that. There's no point beating myself up over the fact that I got ill because if I could have stopped it, I would have stopped it. I never chose to go through that. I am definitely not glad that I had it and that it made me who I am because I could have been a perfectly nice, well-rounded person without having an eating disorder. It's great that I now have so much knowledge of things and can help people online, but my God, would I much rather be a person that just went to uni and went out clubbing and had a big group of friends that hadn't been ripped away from them because I couldn't live properly. Do you know what I mean? I would have done anything to have not had an eating disorder, so I'm not glad it's made me who I am. There are aspects of me now that I'm like, it's great that I am like this and I wouldn't have been like this if I didn't have my eating disorder, but I would still trade what I went through for a normal life any day. So yeah, basically. <laughs> are you going to continue your YouTube? Wait, are you gonna continue with YouTube after you are fully recovered since it's a recovery channel? Okay, so my opinion on this, obviously everyone thinks I'm a recovery channel. My Instagram's lit for recovering. I do wanna change that one day, but I'm a bit like everyone like who follows me thinks of me as we're recovering because that's what I started off as and I don't know weird feelings around that but sorry I keep touching my hair as well but it's just going in my eyes um what was I saying ah yeah I'm, I am gonna carry on after I'm fully recovered um because I don't feel like this is a recovery channel I feel like this is a I don't know this is a channel where I've documented my journey but now this is more a channel where I'm helping people or trying to help people and sharing stuff about my recovered life so i definitely will carry it on because in my mind what i run isn't a recovery channel even though it technically kind of is but I, d I don't know it's complicated but yeah i'll carry it on basically mm. this one was an interesting one to receive there was so much shit about you online about how you'll never recover and i'm very proud because you proved everyone wrong is basically what this person said i kind of forgot oh, God. i kind of forgot that um People had been chatting so much poo poo about me behind my back. Um, when I was first recovering and putting it online, there were like tons of people online on like random forums that I didn't even know existed that were being like, "She's not really going to recover. She doesn't. Act she's not actually trying to recover. She's not. She's not going to do it." And I was just like, "Whoa! Like, where are you making this assumption from? Where are you getting that from?" Because like, I was giving it my all, and then like I was in all in recovery. And people were on their little keyboards going, she's not gonna do it, she's not gonna recover, she doesn't even wanna recover. Like, why would I be posting about it and actually getting away and challenging myself and sharing those messages with people 
if I didn't want to recover because it certainly wasn't for validation. I've made like such an effort to not share triggering things and I actually get really upset when I do actually accidentally share something that people, somebody finds triggering or people find triggering because that's like never my intention but I just never understood why people were so convinced that I was just not going to recover. Like I would definitely not have put myself out there to millions of people if I wasn't trying to recover. By the way, I am nearly done. I just, I don't know if in the camera you can only see that side of the bowl, but if you can, I'm not that slow and easy. Mm, I think I've answered all the questions I screenshotted, so let's find some more. How did you come back into real life after your eating disorder? Socially, school-wise, etc. Now this is something that I did really struggle with, and actually I still do, because I was out of normal life for like two years. Then it was lockdown for like two years and the past year I've been inside a lot because I've been really struggling to get out. Um, and this isn't, this is a very vulnerable topic for me and something that I probably wouldn't normally talk about. Despite having a YouTube channel where I talk to no one and seem quite confident probably, I'm actually quite socially anxious. And I think that that is because I just have been out of normal life for so long. And obviously people, when you have eating disorders, you are kind of taken away from normal life. And I think coming back to it is so difficult because you feel so out of practice. But just know that nobody is thinking the things you're thinking about yourself. Like, if you stumble over a word or you don't know what to say, no one's going to think, what a weirdo, like what a creep. Like, nobody's thinking that. You can tell yourself that, but... In reality, everyone is so focused on themselves that they're not actually going to be judging you. And if that's where the anxiety is coming from, I hope that helps. But also, like, getting back into school and stuff when you've been out of the swing of it, I really, really struggled with that. I didn't know how to... I, could, I don't know. I couldn't get back in that kind of mindset of, like, doing work and stuff. So it was really, really hard. Basically, just don't be hard on yourself because it's completely human and natural that you're going to find it a little bit harder to do normal people things after you've been ill and I think that's something I'm coming to terms with at the moment because I keep beating myself up having gone out into the real world a bit more and feeling so like weird and out of place um yeah I'm just kind of trying to tell myself that actually it's very normal to be a bit inept having been away from normal life for so long would you ever want to write a book yeah, I actually would. I would actually love to write a book because I've always loved writing, like always loved writing. I make my captions, like make my captions. I write my captions and that's probably one of my favorite parts of Instagram is the fact that I can write those captions. Like I enjoy it so much. So yeah, 100%. Why do you drink sugar-free soda? Not gonna lie, I always avoid this question. The reason that I drink sugar-free soda and like I, I have chosen Fanta with sugar in it like I, it's not I'm not scared of sugar I just I mean I already kind of have some teeth issues I definitely brush my teeth and I look after them but like one of the main things that dentists tell you is to not drink sugary fizzy drinks that's not like diet culture that's just like a health thing for like my mouth because it does it's not great for your teeth is it which is why I don't drink the oh my god I just can't think anymore <laughs> sugar ones but i would sometimes i just usually opt for sugar free ones but everyone seems to think it's a disordered thing but i've done it it's been my whole life like that's what my family do it's what my friends do and if you want to drink the full sugar ones go for it not telling you not to absolutely what you want if they're the ones you enjoy then drink them but um that's the reason i pick it i literally don't care about the calories or anything like i, I don't think about that anymore do you believe in full recovery? Yeah, 100%. I think I have been told a lot, a lot of times by professionals, it's always going to be in the back of your mind. It's always going to be there. And of course, like you can't, you can't forget everything that you've been through in life. You can't forget the memories. But I do believe for myself that I will get to a place where I don't worry about food at all. Because I've come so far in such a short space of time already that I just don't see a way that I wouldn't fully managed to forget about, not forget about, because I've just said you can't do that. What am I trying to say? Let go of it all, basically. Like, I do believe that I will fully recover and I believe that everyone can fully recover. And I think them saying that you're always gonna have a, a voice in the back of your head, which is what I've been told a lot, doesn't mean that you're always gonna be listening to that voice. 
Like sure, I reckon for a lot of people, when a stressful situation comes up, you might get a little thought in the back of your head that goes restrict because then you won't feel anything bad. But if you're fully recovered, then you're not gonna pay any attention at all. It will be the same as like those intrusive thoughts where it's like throw that mug of tea across the room. Do you know what I mean? Like you're just gonna be like, that's a weird thought and move on. So I think when people have told me recently, well, you're always gonna have it in the back of your head. Like, yeah, sure, I'll probably always have the odd thought, but it's never gonna impact me or worry me. So it basically will be full recovery, if you see what I mean. That's my opinion. My pasta is entirely cold right now. Mm -mm. What's a recent mental health slash ED recovery win that you've yet to share? Obviously the fact that I'm eating fish. I mean, I've shared it now, but I put on my Instagram story the other day um, that Brandon and I went on a date night and I had squid. I didn't actually explicitly say it though. I just wrote squid, <laughs> um, but nobody actually picked up on it as far as I'm aware which I'm not, I wasn't like doing it to like, what do you call it? <laughs> What's this? I don't know what I mean, but I wasn't doing it for any reason. I was literally just saying what I had, but a part of me was like, oh my God, people are going to be mad at me or something for eating fish. Not that they should be, but you do get some vegans in the comments that have a go at me for eating eggs, which is not a reflection of all vegans. I'm sorry that vegans get the kind of I need to stop with the hand actions because I don't actually know what I'm saying. A reputation that they like push their views onto everyone because they don't, but there's like a select few that will comment things. So I was worried about that with the fish kind of thing, but yeah, it was fine. I'm on my very last few bits now. That was delicious. And meals don't usually take me 40 minutes to eat, but I was talking the entire time. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you took something from it or enjoyed your meal that you ate with me. Um, I will be back next week. I think I've done three weeks in a row now, which is a win for me. <laughs> Look after yourselves, please. Be kind to yourself. Remember that the t-shirts um, are only available until the end of this day. They're watching it on right now. And I will leave the link in the description if you want to grab yourself one. So yeah, love you all. Goodbye.